I love Pokemon. Let me say it for you again. I love Pokemon. <laughs> Before I was even a gamer, I was playing Pokemon. It was like, what made me want to play games, I guess. My introduction to RPGs, my introduction to a world that wasn't this one. And I, I, I still love it. Pokemon's definitely like the gateway <gasps> to games. Mm, the, the gateway, gateway to gaming. game. Be careful, kids. <laughs> so the new Pokemon game just came out. Obviously, I don't think that we need to tell you that because I'm sure that you've heard all of the things that people were saying about it and it's not really all that good. Yeah, people are a little bit upset. And for good reason, to be fair. Definitely, 100%. Yeah. But there is like a lot to love about that game. We are like totally obsessed with it, <laughs> you could say. So we just wanted to kind of give our thoughts on it and plead our case why we think it's like the best Pokemon game ever. Yep, it is both the best Pokemon game ever and the worst Pokemon game ever at the same time. Yeah. I know that sounds confusing, but bear with us. Also, just wanted to say that this is a totally spoiler-free video. We've only captured footage in the first couple of areas, mm -hmm. tried to avoid all Pokemon that haven't been revealed previously, everything yeah. like that. So if you're worried, don't worry, basically. Before we like kick things off properly though, why don't you throw a Pokeball at those like and subscribe buttons and uh, Let's get into it. So I do feel like I just got done saying this in our <laughs> Sonic review last week. But again, we sort of have to start with the bad things or else you would be looking at all this footage and thinking, <laughs> what? <laughs> this, this sucks. <laughs> Big question mark. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's start off with some of the bad. You've got the obvious ones. The frame rate sucks. Like running into this town here, Oh man, the whole game just slows down so bad. Yeah, it happens a lot. Anytime that you're running into a town, anytime that there's a cutscene and there's anything in the background, like the frame rates are gonna be super bad. Horrendously yeah. bad. Like worst frame rates on a first party Nintendo title ever. It's also got hectic popping. Basically, if you can think of a graphical issue that exists, then you will find it here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Literally all the graphic issues yeah. are here. Texture pop in, character pop in, anything that can pop in, pops in. Or out. That's what she said. <laughs> Sometimes if you like engage in a battle with a Pokemon or another trainer and there is like any other trainers in the background, I notice that a lot of time the trainers actually disappear, but their Pokeballs that they're like throwing up into the air while they're waiting for you to come and battle with them, like the Pokeballs are still there. And so they're just like flying around by themselves, but the characters are gone. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that the whole game just feels so janky, man. Mm -hmm. Like as Laura said, every graphical issue that exists, exists here. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what we say when we say janky? It's like a weird term, but it's honestly the best way to describe it. Cause it's like choppy and it seems like it's sort of freezing and you're sitting there staring at your screen like, hello, especially when you capture a Pokemon. So the space between after you catch a Pokemon and you're able to continue on your adventures, I don't know, it feels like forever. Yeah, Laura has a real problem with the game being slow. I and am a busy lady. I am in a rush. And especially the first day I was playing it, I was sitting there and I was like, oh, this sucks because I just wanted to like get it done. Do you know what I mean? Pokemon has always been slow. So I understand that she is right. The whole game is a little bit slow. That's not helped by the lack of frames that we have going on all the time and the mm -hmm. pop in and the jankiness. Yeah, it like chugs along at a slow pup pup. Okay, arguably the worst graphical issue is all the weird bugs that happen. So sometimes when you catch a Pokemon, the sky is all of a sudden the ground. Mm -hmm. You can see through cliffs. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I've seen so many images online of people's eyes popping out and all of a sudden your character is like a wacky waving inflatable <laughs> arm tube man. You know, like there is just so much weird stuff going on in this mm -hmm. game. How much of it is real? I don't know. I haven't encountered any wacky waving inflatable arm tube men. Oh, that's an awful to say. But apparently people have, and honestly, one wacky waving inflatable arm tube man is too many wacky waving inflatable arm tube men. It's actually wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man. Oh, I'm missing a whole yeah, one. Yeah, oh, and you still thought it was a mouthful. Yeah, <laughs> I did. It, it, it is. So all of this just makes the game feel 
unfinished. Come on, Game Freak. You're literally the biggest company of all time. The Pokemon company is like the largest franchise ever, right? Yeah. What are you doing? I understand that they probably don't want to push it back or whatever, but you could like hire a whole nother thousand people or whatever to like keep working on it so that people don't have to have crunch culture or anything like that. That's obviously not good, but yeah, it's very, very unfinished. We thought that Sword and Shield was unfinished and everyone was complaining about that tree, but the trees are the least of our problems. These trees yeah. actually look all right. Yeah, they do. Yeah, I like them. <laughs> it was like the first thing I did. I was like, hmm, let me see that tree. So all of these things do suck, but the worst thing of all is that the game actually like crashes. And I feel like that's something that I would expect from an indie game, smaller developer, whatever. But I do not expect a triple A game to crash. A triple A game from the biggest company in the world. Yeah, why? To crash. I haven't experienced a crash yet, thank God, but Laura hasn't. She have. was not a happy girl. No. Is it laziness? I don't think so necessarily. Is it rushed? Definitely. My kind of thought process in this is that because Game Freak is such a huge company, they've got so much riding on this new generation of Pokemon. Like without the games coming out, they can't have anime, they can't have toys, they can't have trading cards. They've got all of this stuff lined up, ready to go out the door. And if they delay the game by three months, they've got to delay all that stuff by three months. I definitely do understand that. And that is probably what happened. But at the end of the day, like, is the Pokemon company going to go under because all of their schedule got pushed back by another six months? Like, absolutely not. It probably wouldn't even make a single difference in the world whatsoever, apart from the fact that people would actually like their game a lot more. It comes off like they don't care. They know that this game is unfinished and runs like crap because they know the limitations of the Switch. They haven't changed over the past like oh, seven yeah. years. It's not the Switch's fault. No. no. Yeah. So they've made the game. It doesn't run well on the system, but they're just like, whatever, we don't care because we know it's going to sell heaps anyway. So just like push it out the door. But kind of seems like they don't care. It's a bit Okay, we banged on about those those issues for way longer than I wanted to. This is a positive video. We do genuinely love Scarlet and Violet, and it does do a lot of things right. So let's talk about that. Let's be the positive, happy-go-lucky people we are, you know? Like, what yeah. Pokemon, yeah! So you know the classic Pokemon game where you pick your starter, you go out on your quest, you get all of the gym badges, and then you beat the Elite Four, and then the game's over. But this game is absolutely nothing like that. So it's an open world Pokemon game, what Pokemon fans have been asking for for probably decades. Way too long, it feels like. So it is an open world Pokemon game, but it doesn't feel like you don't know where to go or it's too overwhelming or anything like that. So there's three main quests. The first is the gym badges, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that premise that you just mentioned does still exist. Mm. It's just not the only thing that exists. Yeah, because you can also go capture some Titan Pokemon and unravel their mystery. And then there's also the quest line where you have to defeat the bad guy team who are never really that bad these days. When Team Star was first revealed, I was like, ah, another lame team. But honestly, this premise of going around and beating all five of their bases, mm -hmm. and it's not just your regular Pokemon battles like turn-based battles. They, they try a little something, something different there, which I really appreciate. Just the premise of having to go out and beat their bases and learning information about them. There's a mysterious character. There's a whole lot of story there. And I so appreciate that. Like, finally, there's some proper story in this game, man. There's also a whole bunch of story behind the Titan quest. I think that the Titan quest is actually my favorite quest out of all of them. So we don't want to ruin the story for anyone because we want you to experience this for yourself because it is genuinely really good. But it's the most emotion I've ever felt in a Pokemon game with this Titan quest. Mm -hmm. Basically, they tell you at the start, you're going around to collect these like mysterious herbs that are like forgotten relics of the past that these Titan Pokemon are guarding. But the more Titan Pokemon you defeat, the more you unravel this mystery. And oh man, is it good. Like it is really, really good. And it genuinely makes you want to go to the next one. 
As soon as I found out what the Titan quest was actually about, I just wanted to drop everything and only do that mission for the rest of the game. But I guess that brings us to our next point, which is that it's really well balanced. You can do whatever you want, whenever you want, but there are still levels and things that might stop you from-, from The game moving. pushes you in a certain direction. Yeah. There are definitely places where you're like, I shouldn't be here right now because I don't have a level 70 Pokemon or mm -hmm. my Pokemon are level 20. And sure, you can go grind, for ages and, and go there if you want to, mm -hmm. but the game does push you in a certain direction. Laura went to the final Titan Pokemon like straight up and can't do it. It was a mistake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so now we talked a little bit about the story and how it all works and what there is to do. What this game does the most right is the open world that we mentioned before. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I am so excited that I can just roam the world of Pokemon. Mm -hmm. It is such a breath of fresh air. And look, jankiness and all that aside, the world is genuinely really nice. I think if nothing popped in, it, it would be quite beautiful actually. So it is open world and there is obviously so much stuff to do, but there's not too much stuff to do. And it's also not empty. Like I feel like a lot of open world games, people say that the world seems empty. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's a common a common theme and it's not it's not empty but it's not too full it's like just the right amount and you can mm -hmm. seek out the things that you want to seek out and if you just want to boost it straight to the next town then you can do that as well yeah I feel like it's also a common theme of people complaining that there's too much in the open world you know like Ubisoft is notorious for just cramming heaps into their worlds and that's fine I like both ways the Pokemon definitely has that balance figured out mm-hmm Honestly, the fact I can go anywhere and do anything in a Pokemon game is just, it's still crazy to me, you know? Like forget route one, two, three. That's in the past. We're never going back there, man. <laughs> I hope not anyway. This is the future. <laughs> the future is now. The fact that you can do whatever you want and explore everything has actually inspired me to complete my Pokédex, which I've never done in any Pokemon game. I've always kind of set off on my quest and done the gym badge thing and then been like, okay, cool, but I actually want to complete the Pokédex in this game. And I think that that is due to the exploration. I was just going to say that. That is the exploratory element for mm -hmm. sure. Because, I mean, again, back to Route 1. Oh, you go through the route, you're done. There's nothing special, there's no secrets, there's no, oh, what if I go over there, there might be a new Pokemon. But mm -hmm. in this game... Yeah. In this game there is. I like got my first gym badge after like eight hours or something because I just couldn't leave until I'd explored every section of the place I was in. And same, I've never completed a Pokedex before, but I'm actually inspired to do it this time. For the first time ever, maybe I will. And I think also it has something to do with the fact that this is the first ever Pokemon generation I've gone into without knowing any of the Pokemon. I agree. I agree. If you guys are thinking of picking up this game, just do yourself a favor and not look up any of the Pokemon it's that are going to be in there. It's actually way funner. Like I've gone through my team and replaced everyone in there just so that I can evolve them and see what the latest <laughs> Pokemon is. Maybe look up the starter Pokemon though, because you don't want to be stuck with Quackly. Yeah. Okay. That leads us nicely into our next point. There are some interesting Pokemon designs. Quaxley, not a fan. Definitely the wrong starter choice. The other two are good. But overall, I feel like this gen has some really, really strong Pokemon designs. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's some you're not gonna like. Of course, that happens in every gen. You can't please everyone with every single Pokemon. That's true. Klefki. Mm. Literally the worst Pokemon ever. There are some odd choices in these Pokemon evolutions. You'll find a, the cutest pre-evolution to a Pokemon of all time and then it evolves into some like grotesquely weird. Ugly monstrosity. Yeah. <laughs> but overall, I do really like a lot of the Pokemon designs in this gen. Yeah, they've done a good job. Oh, and the other thing I appreciate about the Pokemon designs is the textures. Pokemon don't look like they're made out of like clay and plastic anymore. You can actually tell like the texture of the Pokemon. If like, it's furry, if it's rubbery. <laughs> like look at my little chunk of little ass. Look at your little furry butt. Isn't that cute? It's a furry butt. I just want to touch it. Oh, look at me. I'm going to go touch the butt. Another thing that I really love about this new Pokemon game is the music. The soundtrack mm. is so 
so good. The terrestrializing soundtrack is super awesome. I yep. love the amount of metal that's making its way into yeah, into video games these yeah. days. Yeah. What is it with video games and metal? I feel like there's a link there. Anyways, I really like the gym leader music. There's like this chanting going on in the background and yeah. I think that is just perfect for like a gym battle. Of course the crowd is going to be chanting. And there's also all these like, not remixes, but some of the songs are very reminiscent of some of the old Pokemon tracks. Uh -huh. Just with like a coat of paint on them almost. Like Laura actually started playing just before I did, despite me getting the games for my birthday, but that's a whole other issue. Uh, Laura started playing her one and I was like, wait, I recognize that song, but I didn't, but I did, but I didn't. Because it's not the same, but it is, but it's not. The biggest thing that this Pokemon has going for it over previous generations is that it's trying new things. It's being innovative, at least within the Pokemon space anyway. Is there anything that it's done this time around that you're like, oh man, why hasn't this been the standard for a decade now? Mm -hmm. Definitely the auto battles and the auto healing. So the most annoying and maybe, what's that word? Um, when it's, <laughs> no, no, the word when it's like so repetitive and mundane, <laughs> tedious. Tedious, same thing. What's the most tedious thing about Pokemon? When you have to battle them over and over again. Like grinding. Grinding, yeah. But in this Pokemon game, you can do this thing called auto battling. So you just press one of the buttons and it just sends your Pokemon out. And if there's like a herd of Tauros there, then your Pokemon just goes pew, 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 and just like picks them all off one by one. You don't quite get as much EXP for it, but you do still get enough. And another feature that Laura mentioned that I actually just discovered today because, you know, reading's not my forte apparently, is the auto healing stuff. So you can just like open up your menu and click minus and all your Pokemon are just like, boop, healed. It'll just use your potions first. Such a good idea. Mm -hmm. Wish I'd known about it earlier. So what we're trying to say, the whole point of this video is that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are so much fun. Mm -hmm. I am having so much fun with these games. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet are definitely the best Pokemon games of all time, even though they are also the worst Pokemon games of all time. So at the end of the day, what we really want you to take away from this video is you are going to see a lot of stuff about how bad the game is. Just don't let that stop you from actually buying the game because you will still have fun with it. I can like guarantee you that. So if you're new to Pokemon, this is not gonna be the Pokemon that makes you go, oh my God, I understand what everyone's been talking about for decades now. It's great, how good is this? No, it's not gonna do that. But if you are a Pokemon veteran like us, then this is it. This is the game. This is what we've been asking for. Mm -hmm. Sure, it runs like crap. I get it. If you can't look past that, that's, that's totally fair and I definitely understand, but it is fun. Are you having fun? I'm having fun. Is it the most fun you've ever had with a Pokemon game? It's the most fun I've ever had with a Pokemon game. So it's the best one? It's actually so much fun that we didn't even write a script for this video. We're just like winging this whole thing. <laughs> yeah, so, it worked out all right. So before you go, can you please tell us if you like this form of video, like more natural or whatever, over our other types of videos and then maybe we can like do this more often and play more games but <laughs> yeah more time for video games yeah we or just we'll just never do it again and actually like do our job probably yeah <laughs> we just neglected to write a script because <laughs> we played pokemon mm -hmm. it's like seven o'clock in the evening right now because we're in bed all day playing pokemon yeah should we write a script no i just want to play some more pokemon yeah should i go to the bathroom no i just want to play some more pokemon i haven't showered in like three days i want to play some more pokemon no, no, right now You know what? Yeah. I'm actually going to go play some more Pokemon Let's right do it. now. <laughs> Let us know in the comments if you think Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is the best or the worst Pokemon game of all time. We think it's both. There is nothing wrong with having a good time with something that is kind of average. <laughs> I do it every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, on that note, I need to play some more Pokemon to make myself feel better. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe before you go. And we'll see you next week. <laughs> Maybe I'll just be doing it by myself. See you next week. I'm still here. It's okay. Oh. Bye. <laughs>